Despite controversies and legal challenges, the British government has always insisted its arms licensing rules are robust and the courts have tended to agree. We have one of the strictest arms licensing regimes in the world. Robust? Maybe. But are the laws as transparent as the British government would have us believe? After extensive research, Guy News has found that the British government has no idea exactly how many weapons the UK is selling to other countries. On top of that, we have traced British sniper rifles into the hands of Russian troops in Ukraine, something which the British government cannot explain. So we're going to lay out how we found these guns, who is using them and why this is important. This is a sniper rifle made by Accuracy International, a firearms manufacturer based in Portsmouth. They make top of the range military grade sniper rifles. In 2015, the company was given a business enterprise award by the Queen. To be clear, we're not accusing Accuracy International of doing anything wrong, but they are a good example of how the system works, or you might say, doesn't work. In a joint investigation with Lighthouse Reports, The Guardian and Bellingcat, Sky News has found examples of Accuracy International rifles being used around the world, including by Russian troops. We have worked alongside researchers with extensive weapons identification experience to underpin our findings, and it is all in the detail. The easiest and surest way to identify a gun is by locating the serial number, like in this picture of the then Russian president, Dmitry Medvedev. By that, we can tell that he is using an Accuracy International Arctic Warfare model. But that isn't always possible because the serial number simply isn't always visible. So we looked for other distinctive features to help us identify a sniper rifle. This is the Accuracy International AXMC model as an example. Take note of the receiver, the stock, the handguard, the barrel, and the pins. Once we knew what we were looking for, the research team then cross-referenced our information with pictures and videos of sniper rifles around the world to see how they're being used and by whom. This video was shared by the Ukrainian military who claim it was filmed in eastern Ukraine in February this year, although we can't verify that date. Through their equipment and clothes, the figures appear to be Russian special operations soldiers. They're in the deserted village of Donetsky in the occupied Luhansk region of Ukraine. How do we know that? Well, we geolocated the video using several identifiable landmarks like this wall, the train lines and this house. We found these distinctive landmarks on Google Earth and we can confidently say that they are in Donetsky. One of the soldiers is holding a weapon which appears to be a sniper rifle, but we can't see it clearly enough to identify it. In a longer, separate video of the same group seen by Sky News, we can see the same soldier and the same rifle. This time, it is clear enough to ID. Using the techniques that we described earlier, we believe that this is a British-made Accuracy International rifle, model AX338. We have compared this rifle to an image in the manufacturer's official brochure and we can identify these key similarities. Early in the clip, we get a good view of this person. From his social media account, he appears to be a Russian soldier or volunteer, but we haven't been able to fully verify this. So here we have a British-made sniper rifle being used by Russian forces in eastern Ukraine. But why does this matter? Well, Russia is occupying this part of Ukraine, and Ukraine is an ally of Britain. And, crucially, the British government has told us they have only ever allowed rifles to be exported to Russia for commercial or sporting purposes, never for use by Russian forces. And this isn't the only time that we have seen AI guns in the hands of the Russian military. This picture is from 2010. It shows a rifle being used by a Russian security services sniper on a gantry round the Kremlin in Moscow. If we zoom in, you can see those pins and receiver. They match up with the AI Arctic Warfare Magnum model. 
этом армейский снайпер действует. Here is another example. This is a Russian security service training exercise from 2019. If we pause here, you can see two sniper rifles being used. The weapon in the front is a modified version of the AXMC model that we showed you earlier. The stock is from another Accuracy International rifle, the AT-308. So we have traced UK-made rifles into the hands of Russian forces. But Accuracy International, the manufacturers, say that they haven't sold any weapons to Russia since the year 2000. And in 2014, the EU put an arms embargo on Moscow. Well, it is concerning and it shows the complexity of the international arms trade. You normally associate proliferation of small weapons with non-state actors, with uh, tribal conflicts, with terrorism, extremism, or indeed drug smuggling, people trafficking and so forth. But here we have a state that has an arms embargo against it, now using weapon systems that are designed and, and procured here in the UK. Now, big questions to whether this, as you suggest, were part of a trade deal prior to 2014, or indeed have been exchanged via a third party. And that's the piece that concerns me, whether we've actually exported these in good faith to another country who have then exported them again to Russia to be used in these situations. It all comes down to how the UK exports these weapons, which is mind-bogglingly complicated. But bear with us. To sell things like rifles, tear gas and tanks, a company needs an export licence, a permit if you like. They broadly fit into two categories, standard and open. Standard licences contain lots of detail, including how much the items are worth. This can then give a clue as to how many rifles, for example, are being sold. But open licences tell you much less. Basically, just the type of item and which country it is going to. And here is the important part. Open licences do not give an indication of how many items are being sold. So it could be five rifles, 5,000 rifles, or even 500,000 rifles. So if the government doesn't know precisely how many weapons are being exported, how can it say with confidence that its licensing process is robust and transparent? To put this into some sort of context, an estimate done by the government into the amount of money raised by arms sales has it that as much as 50% come from open licenses. So we asked the government for clarification on how many weapons are sold abroad. And they said, they don't have that data. They simply don't record it. The use of open licence is extremely concerning. It rem removes a lot of transparency from a process which is already very secretive. It means that we don't really know how many weapons are uh, being sold. We don't really know how many weapons are being exported. And if we don't have that basic information to begin with, then we can't hold the government to account with it. The government says its laws around arms sales are strict and robust. And yet we have found British-made rifles in the hands of Russian forces. And nobody seemingly can explain how they got there. I can say as a former foreign minister and defence minister that we do have very vigorous licensing systems in place. But as this exposes, we do need to look at this again. 